I'm Chris Cravens and I am an enamel and metal artist uh, in Lebanon, Ohio. And one of the questions that I've been getting a lot recently from people in our enameling guild is about mason stains. Um, I'm making this video for them and thought I'd share it with the world too on YouTube. So, um, so let's get started. Okay, so what is the difference between a mason stain or ceramic pigment and something like Thompson overglaze enamels or sunshine painting enamels? Um, essentially, the difference <laughs> is the overglaze painting enamels and the sunshine enamels are enamel. They have glass mixed into them. So um, when you get a sunshine enamel like this one here uh, from Cool Tools, I just ordered, I had ordered a set um, of the painting enamels from Cool Tools. They also have them on the Thompson enamel website. Price is the same. Um, they come in, the sample pack comes in little jars like this and you really just don't need <laughs> You don't need a lot of these things it's because you're you're doing detailed painting work and little things like that to enhance your enamels. Um, these and the overglaze from Thompson are really easy to use. Um, you can mix them with acrylics, with oils, even with clear fire, and use brushes, um, pens, different things to apply them. They are a little bit tougher with um, something like this. Sorry, I didn't have my tools out. I should have uh, should've done a better job. So like this right here is a, a crow quill pen and it's very, very thin. Um, the enamel, sunshine enamels and the overglaze can be a little tricky with this because they want to clog up the delivery mechanism. So they work better if you're just going to like stipple or something like that. Um, so enough of that. <laughs> this video is about mason stains, so let's get on with that. Um, mason stains, I took a class in the fall of 2019 with Martha Banyas. If you ever have the opportunity to learn from her, do it. She has been working with mason stains for a long time. Um, She's just a beautiful person and an incredible teacher. I'm going to, if I can, find her online, include a link so that you can see her work. Um, I think she's planning on offering some workshops maybe online through Mary Lee Ray, but I'm not sure. Mary Lee Ray also is partnering with someone. I Her name is escaping me. She's new at working with Mason Stains, maybe two years in, but does beautiful work. Um, I think there's an online, more in-depth workshop with her that you can check out. I'll include that also as a link. Um, but Martha Bandy is for sure. Another person, if you can find classes from her, is Jilly Byron. She's over in the UK. Again, she's been working with mason stains and pigments for many, many years, since the 90s. And um, it does incredibly detailed portrait miniatures that I, I just can't even explain them. So I'll include a link to her too. Um, I know that she has a couple upcoming classes at Pocassin Arts, which I'll also include a link. <laughs> um, Pocassin Arts is great for online classes, so if you can nab a class with her, do it. My experience with mason stains is very limited, so I still consider myself a absolute, not absolute beginner, but beginner level, beginner intermediate with mason stains. Um, so I'm just going to get you started. Now, first things first, um, you can order uh, sample sizes from a couple different places. I'm gonna include links if I can find them um, below. Or you can just go straight to masoncolor.com and order them there. They don't sell them in small sizes. So um, when I got mine, 
I ordered the quarter pound, which are jars like this. Some of these you'll get less color in a quarter pound than others because the minerals just way more. So this one here is titanium iron brown, <laughs> a quarter pound of this sucker. This is going to last me until I die. So, so when I'm gone, someone is going to be like very happy that they found these in my studio. Yay. So what I've done, um, I took some of these and shared them with friends. So if you have friends that are into this, um, that's a good way to buy them. Buy them, buy, buy them in the bulk and split them up and you'll save a lot of money because I'm not going to lie. Buying the sample packs, you're going to pay. That's all I'm saying on that. All right, what I did, how I like to work uh, with my mason stains, is I just put a little bit in these two ounce solo cups. Um, you, you've seen that with my enamels too. I like to keep my products clean, um, as clean as possible. So I just use a small amount in these things. And then when I'm using it, I'm gonna scoop it out. So mason stains have to be fired onto an enamel surface. Um, the, like I said before, when you're dealing with like Thompson painting colors or sunshine, they have enamel in them already, so they can be fired straight onto bare metal, which is completely awesome. Um, but mason stains, because they have no glass, must be fired on top of something that they're going to stick to. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind with that concept is that you can't like glob on a bunch of mason stain. It's the very thin layer that's got contact with the enamel surface that's actually going to fire in. Everything else is going to come off of there. It's going to flake off. You're, gonna you're actually going to wash it off. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, in the class that I had with Martha, we used 1030 white as our base enamel. Um, it is one of the higher temperature enamels, so it's not gonna move around on you like some of the other ones if you get too hot in the kiln. Um, I mean, all of them will eventually move, but that one has some staying power. So we use 1030 white, do you know a layer of mason stain designs, whatever, pen sketching, brush, whatever. And then um, if you want to do multiple layers, because remember, this stuff doesn't stick to itself, you can do a very thin layer of 2030 clear. Um, so 1030 white, 2030 clear. They fire at about the same temperatures. They work really well together. Um, we used, I want to say 200 mesh sifters in the class. In my studio, I just use 100 mesh because I usually am not doing that many layers of mason stains, but if you really get into this and you wanna do a lot of in-depth art, you're gonna need thin, thin, thin layers of the clear because you're building up layers of glass and you don't want something that's like super thick. Okay, um, mixing. So mixing the mason stains, um, like I mentioned earlier with the sunshine enamels and the Thompson painting enamels, you can mix these with any kind of binder that your heart desires. <laughs> so, um, from Thompson, sorry, I am digging through here. There are a couple of different products that work pretty well. So, all right, I'm just gonna talk about these three. So, first of all, there's good old Clear Fire. Um, Clear Fire is a glue. Uh, sometimes you can mix it like 50-50 with water. That's usually what we use if we spray on to hold on the greens of enamel. Um, that can work if you want to like put, um, let's say you want to use your mason stains and just touch little pieces on like kind of abstractly, right? You're not going to sift this stuff. It's very, very thin. 
Um, let me open this up so you can kind of get an idea. So it is like, it's like powder. Like the enamels, here I just picked up some on my finger. If you've ever played pool, you know how pool chalk feels? Like that is what this stuff feels like. Pool chalk. <laughs> so a lot, a lot, a lot thinner than the 80 mesh enamels most of us are used to working with. So you can't sift this stuff. Um, but you can like pick it up with a dry brush and plunk it down on a surface that maybe you've brushed some clear fire on. You can mix this with clear fire and it'll give you kind of like an acrylic paint feel, um, but it's not going to go on smoothly. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just say it that way. So clear fire is one thing you can do. You're better off if you like acrylic using something like this acrylic medium. This is A13 acrylic medium. These are my little bottles. Again, I like working. I don't like using those big bottles um, just in case I get crap in here. It just keeps things clean. So A13 acrylic medium. Thompson also has something called A14 acrylic painting medium. <laughs> so it's a little confusing. Do I want A13? Do I want A14? A14 just takes a little bit longer to dry. Um, and it's really meant for people that like to blend colors and work the surface um, like you would with acrylic paint. So I find myself with the little bit that I do um, using A13 a lot. And I use this with just good old El Cheapo brushes. <laughs> so again, I am not a fine artist. Um, fine artists will probably use much better brushes, but me, I think this is like royal crafter's choice, whatever. It works for me because I'm just abstractly putting color down where I feel like I like it. Um, you can also do cool stuff with this, like spread it out on a um, ceramic palette. And eh, this is a bad example. So this is like, this one I got from Amazon as mixing walls and there's a lid for it. It's actually over on my bench full of stuff or I would get it and show it to you. So I'm not going to do that. But there's a little lid and it makes a nice little flat surface. You can take your mixed up um, enamels, put it in there and use something crazy like a sponge dauber. And um, you can lay a stencil down on top of your enamel piece and plump, 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 get almost like a sponge effect. So that's kind of fun. Um, same deal with this. Uh, you can use little, I just cut up makeup sponges. So here's like little teeny tiny daubers. Uh, I've got toothpicks in here. I like to do things with the acrylic mixed with the mason stains. I don't know, the, the sky's the limit. Um, again, this is just like an intro to mason stains, so go play and have some fun. Let me know how it goes in the comments below. Um, all right, so that was acrylics. What I tend to use most often, because this is just my style, is this little crow quill pen. It's like really tiny and pointy. Um, I'll put a link to these. This is Speedball. Um, and then this is like a really pretty hand turned because I like pretty tools. So I bought this from someone on Etsy before I knew my uncle could actually make me one. Anyway, <laughs> so you don't have to have a gorgeous pen like this. They have a nice little holder for these things and they work great. But the mason stains, I like to mix with um, something called, where's my bottle? <laughs> Jilly oil. So again, these are my bottles. Um, Jilly oil is a recipe from Jilly Byron and I got it from Martha's class. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share it here because it's pretty much common knowledge now. 
So the recipe is super easy. Um, it is three parts balsam oil to one part anise seed oil. You can find your distributors for essential oils, whoever you like to work with. Um, those oils, they smell good. Like I actually like working <laughs> with this. It smells like licorice in here and I like it. Um, so that's what I use with pen and ink. Um, again, learned it from Julie Byron through Martha Banius. I think Mary Lee Ray has this all over the place now. Um, so that's the recipe. And um, I'm going to show you that technique uh, now. Okay, so here I am getting ready to mix up some mason stain. Um, I've got a couple different blues that I actually want to mix together to get the blue that I'm looking for for my bird here. So this one is 63, can't read that number, <laughs> it looks like 30, 6337 royal blue and 6320 delft blue. Um, it's best to go ahead and mix up the colors separately and then take your mixed two together and put them in another well. So again, this is just a little small ceramic mixing well. It's cheap off of Amazon. Um, so this also, this very fancy looking stick here is a stainless steel swizzle stick also off Amazon. I think a pack of 12 is like eight bucks or something. I use these things all over the studio. Um, little side note, they work great for mixing up uh, borax and water for soldering. Anyway, back to regularly scheduled programming. I'm just gonna use an end here and just grab a little bit of pigment, pop it in the well. Close that sucker because I have spilled one of those before and it makes an ungodly mess. Um, I just use paper towels to clean off in between here. And I'm going to get my other one, my Delft Blue. Get a little dollop of that. Put it in this well. that off just because I like to keep things clean. All right, this again is the Julie oil, um, three parts balsam oil to one part anise seed. And I'm just gonna put a few drops. That's three, four, five. I would suggest, you know, as you're getting started, just Put a couple in there, play around till you find the consistency you like. And I'm going to use this end to mix up. You can also, just to get it started, this end is nice for that. This end is really nice for mashing it down in there. I'm not going to do it today. I'm just going to use this end and call it done. Um, again, I, my art, I'm not like this gorgeous fine art doing portrait miniatures, and so this works for me. Um, okay, now I'm going to clean off my mixer. Put some drops of oil on this one. I... When I'm mixing these, I'm looking for a pretty runny consistency because I'm going to put it in this fine crow quill pen. And so I want it to be more like ink. Um, if I was doing something like using a brush, you know, like let's say I wanted to act like I was oil painting, ta-da. Julia oil works for that too. Just don't put as many drops in. Use a thicker consistency. 
Um, that's the, the really cool thing about these mason stains is that they really do act like an art medium. So now I just, I'm taking a couple scoops. So I've got three scoops of my Delft Blue. And I'm just going to put one scoop of the Royal in first just so I can mix it up and see if it's the color I'm looking for. Not quite there. Um, these mason stains, the color that you see here is pretty close to what it's going to fire at, which is great. Um, the painting enamels from Sunshine also are pretty close to what you're going to get. The Thompson painting enamels, some of them very drastically. <laughs> so um, all of this stuff, no matter what you're doing, and I say this all the time, um, even with regular enamels, you're going to want to run some tests and find the perfect mix that works for you and what you want to accomplish. Okay, I think this blue is almost where I want it. So this process is probably really boring for you right now because you're watching me do this and thinking, man, when is she ever going to get to actually drawing? <laughs> uh, here real soon. There we go. That's the color I'm looking for. Now, um, quick little test. I'm actually looking right here on the side at what's spilling up the well, but I can also quickly take my little guy and do that and see. So it's a nice in between. Here, I'll show you. So if I do this here, see how bright and cheery that one is? A little darker. This one's really dark. Really dark. All right. Now, let's actually use this stuff. So with a crow quill pen, when you're using this with real ink and a real ink well, you got a lot more ink and you just dip it in there. You want to get enough ink in there so you've got a little back here to fill into this reservoir and then it comes through the tip, the split here. So I'm just going to put this on my finger. Hopefully you can see. So if you'll see, it makes a little split. That ink, that's where the ink's going to come through. With this, because I don't have a well to actually dip my pen tip into, I like to use my little Royal Crafter's Choice <laughs> um, cheapy paintbrush. Pick up some ink and paint it on the inside. First time I'll also run a line of it on the outside just to prime, basically to prime that tip. Um, and then I'm going to start to draw. So I under this bird, by the way, this is just a piece of craft foam, that thin craft foam stuff. Um, this is a nice surface to lay your piece on. It's nice and soft under there and it doesn't slide all over. So I'm just going to start to draw here. My enamel here is kind of lumpy because, oh, there we go, just ran out of ink. So I'm going to recharge my brush just like that. I've got a little curved surface I'm working on here because this flower element is raised. So I'm going to now go color my petals in a little bit and make them look nicer. Again, you can do this with a brush, um, anything your heart desires. I just really like scribbly art, <laughs> so that's what I do. 
this scribble. Okay, so the cool part about this is if I see something I don't like, so let's say I make a, whoa, crap, there's a big mistake over there. Whoops. Just grab your eraser like this. Problem solved. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and fire this now. But before I do, um, I want to talk about cleanup of the mason stain. No big surprise here with the alcohol that I'm just going to put it in a little solo cup. I'm just going to dump it out. I'm being lazy. This is just denatured alcohol. Um, you can get it really cheap at hardware stores unless you live in California now. Sorry, guys and girls in California. Um, the rest of us, can we can get some contraband and smuggle it in for you. Anyway, I'm just going to dip this tip in here and swirl it around a little bit. And, uh, you know, just grab a piece of paper towel and kind of scribble it out just to make sure I clean it up. I'm going to do the same with the brush. Um, at the end of the day, you're going to want to take the brush and um, clean it really good with soapy water. I just take it down to uh, our sink and wash it with Dawn and dish water because again, this is like a, I think a pack of 10 brushes costs like $5 or something. So not my big, nice sable brush that I use for watercolor enamels and hey, stuff like here that. Here I am back at the kiln, or not back at, at the kiln. Um, I am right now letting this Julie oil dry really well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, with any kind of liquid that you want to use with your enamel, you need to let it dry good or it's going to blow the grains all over the place. Same thing is true with the mason stains. Um, it will cause bubble marks and crazy things like that. That's what you're looking for might be a fun experiment <laughs> uh, but today that's not what i'm looking for i want my little pen strokes to show because these are like i i like like i said i like that i like i want them to know i made it by hand um so anyway that is drying and then i'm gonna fire it uh firing fire these lower than you would enamels um, if they fire them too hot and too long, they're going to dissipate into the surface. So this is something that you're going to need to practice and play with. Um, in class with Martha Banyas, I think we fired them at, I want to say 1400 for two minutes. Um, and that worked out really well with those nice programmable kilns. Uh, I don't have one of those. I, I mean, I have a great kiln, but I did not buy all of the technology, that, like the programming and digital and all that stuff. I just use an old school pyrometer and I watch. <laughs> so I, I kind of watch what's going on. Um, low and sh shorter firing. Um, when I take it out, I'm, I'm going to turn the camera off when I do all this so you don't have to watch me have fun with all that crazy stuff. Unless, you know what, maybe okay, I will. Okay, so listen. now um, this is pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to um, do the firing and try not to trip over the tripod leg, which is right here. <laughs> so here we go. I just use a firing fork. Um, and for safety purposes with the kiln... I like these screen glasses. Um, you know, I'm not getting any younger, and I don't want to ruin my eyes. Um, I have enough trouble already at over 50, so if those of you who are over 50 out there know what I'm talking about. Um, if you want to feel extra comfortable, there's gloves, like leather gloves you can put on and things like that. I'm really comfortable with this with this method. This firing fork, by the way, um, you can get these at on uh, at Thompson Enamel on their website. They're really nice. 
So right now my kiln is hot. It says it's about 1600 degrees. That is going to just burn off this mason stain. It won't be good. It'll melt. It dissipate. Nope. No good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and grab my piece and I'm going to open the door and I'm letting all this heat out <laughs> and I'm going to let it get down to um, below 1400 actually. If I was smarter I would have just set my kiln temperature lower to begin with but I didn't so this is how it's going to be. So I'm about 1350 right now. I'm going to pop that in there and I'll shut the door. And now we're going to watch it. Um, I, in my studio I have this vintage little timer thing. I'm going to set it just for a minute and a half because I know from firing this piece that is about how long um, how long it takes for those enamel layers to melt. That's something else I want to talk a little bit about while we're waiting and uh, keeping an eye on this temperature. <laughs> so, um, sometimes they're going to take classes and teachers are going to be like, you have to fire it at X temperature for X amount of minutes and there's no other way to do that. That is not true. Um, all kilns are different. If you're using a torch, that's different. It really depends on what your metal and your glass are doing. So learning how, oh, whoa, whoa, burn it up in there. I'm gonna lower that temperature down. This is how you do it without the programmable control, by the way. It's opening and closing the door. So I know that that glass is gonna be good and melty for this amount of time, just because it's what I've done. Mason stains, you can't really watch and keep an eye on them, so you have to trust that your enamel is doing its job and getting them to stick. So I came out a few seconds early, but I knew because I'm actually reading the trivet color <laughs> while it's in there. That's a whole nother subject. I'm not getting into that today. Uh, but some tricks that you can use to make sure that your mason stains are sticking. Um, if you're not really sure what temperature your enamel is melting at, you can put a little teeny dollop of clear, 20, 30 clear on there and watch it melt down. Um, you can also use blue stick. Hold on one second, I'm going to go grab it. This is uh, Thompson Enamel's blue stick. Um, learn this trick from Ricky Frank, and it's a good one. If you put a little drop of blue stick on, it is going to catch fire because that's what it does. <laughs> so it'll little flame, um, and then it will turn black, and then it'll disappear. When it disappears, your metal or your enamel is melted. So that's another good trick. Um, he figured that out just watching his cloisonne work. So I am thank, thank you, Ricky, for sharing that, and I'm passing on the goodness. So um, let's check this little bird out. I'm gonna take him off the trivet. Now, one of the things that I learned from Martha in class is, while this thing's still kinda hot, if you're still not sure, like, oh, I don't know if my mason stains stuck, you can just take a little, um, this is just a little palette knife, and just kind of run it along the surface and you'll see it completely flake off if it's not burnt in there. This is in good. So this is in real good. I'm going to see if I can touch this. Probably still. Oh no. That's cool. I still have blue on my hands from before. So there's the little bird now. I don't know if you can see him. And you can see my design is fired in good. So now, um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and just kind of rinse it just with water um, just to make sure that any extra grains of mason stain are washed off. And then, I'm, I'm not going to bore you with this in the video, I'm just going to talk to you. Uh, then if I want to add more layers of color, I would just come in with 2030 and sift it over this entire surface using a fine grain um, mesh sifter. So 
this is a this is a 150 so I don't know if you can see the difference between this one yeah you can. so this is the one that we normally use the 80 mesh for sifting versus 150 see how fine that is it's kind of woo crazy but uh yeah there's a big difference in the amount of glass that's going to come through this 150 mesh versus the 80 so you'll get a thin 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 layer um so if i wanted to do more mason stain layers on my bird i would just sift through this fine mesh fire it take it out Mix up my other colors, put them on, fire it, lather, rinse, repeat as many times as desired. Um, the more layers that you add, the more careful you need to be with over firing. Um, and we had someone in our class, I felt so bad for her. She had this gorgeous, she was amazing, gorgeous drawing, that painting, beautiful that she had done. And had spent a few hours on the different layers and that almost the last firing was in there a little too long and she had bubbled through on all of her layers it was so sad but it was a good lesson for all of us <laughs> um, so careful careful does okay it. so I just wanted to show you something bonus free bonus material <laughs> so this is another bird um, that I'm working on and this one instead of using the pen and ink I decided to use a brush um, with that same color that I was using before and if you'll see here, this one just came, this came out of the kiln, not just came out. Um, notice how there's some dark blue around the edges and then light blue in the middle there. That is all that same color of mason stain that I had mixed up. But the brush that I was using, because it was an El Cheapo craft brush, leaves a lot of extra um, material. A lot of extra mason stain on there so this is what is going to wash off in the water I just wanted to show you this because um, I thought it might be helpful if something comes out and it looks crazy it could just be because it's excess mason stain so here goes our little birdie taking a bath I'm just gonna use my finger this is just plain water um, it's out of the sink nothing special and I am just cleaning this up. I'm just going to dry it so you can see. So now you can see it's all that nice dark blue. Okay, <laughs> a little bonus part number two. Um, so I mentioned way back at the beginning about your enamel base and how 2030 white is awesome because you can put basically any color on top of it and it looks amazing. But if you're doing something like I did with these crazy birds um, and you have color enamel underneath or a bunch of mason stains and you want to put white on top of those things. Um, these pens, Jelly Roll pens by Sakura, or Sakura, I'm gonna say Sakura, I don't know how to say it, work great. Um, they, the ink has titanium in it, and so the white just stays and it's brilliant and you can't see anything through it sorry about my phone ringing um so jelly roll by secure secura um i don't know about other brands so you can go experiment and see but i do know that it's the titanium that makes them work now if you'll also remember at back at the beginning i said something about um 10 20 titanium white and how it likes to bubble through 
titanium pens like to do the same. So this is like the last thing you're going to do. These come in different sizes. I think the five is like super skinny line, the eight is medium, and a 10 is nice and juicy. I'm just going to use a 10 here because it's an example project and I don't really care what it looks like. Um, these things have a tendency to, uh, the ball has a tendency to get stuck. So I'm going to just scribble on some paper over here to make sure the ink is flowing. And then um, I'm just going to draw. So let's see what happens. So here's my little birdie wing. Oh, you know, I don't really like the way that looks. So I'm going to just grab a paper towel over here and so another way <laughs> to draw if you can't draw is use templates because they work and especially work out well with things like pens so I'm gonna find a good size circle for this bird's wing I think what I started with is probably the best. Set it down there and watch this. Here we go. Having some trouble getting my ink to flow. Another good thing about the template is I can keep going back and forth. And most likely get a nice clean line. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, there's the bird wing. Sakura jelly roll. So I've just shown you one of the techniques um, of using mason stains. The one I use the most, like I said, it's just pen and ink. Um, and I use it to just add line art and different things to the enamels that I like to make. Now, when you're ready to buy, the question always is, what colors should I get? So, <laughs> this is the color chart that I ordered, and I suggest you do this if you decide, yes, I like mason stains, no, I don't wanna buy a sample pack, Yes, I'm just going to buy a few to get started. Order this too so you have a nice reference. Um, these are all the colors. I mean, there's a boatload of them. But all of these can be mixed together. So, like, you can mix some blues and yellows and get different kinds of greens. You can mix whites with some of these and get paler colors. You can mix browns or purples and get darker colors so just like you play with paint it's the same kind of deal um so i'm trying to think if there's anything oh yeah when you do order these um this body stains part ignore those just focus on this these stains here um, and like I said I'm a beginner so if you really want to know about these and you really want to play with them and like work with a project or learn from a master Julie Byron Martha Banyas look them up um, try to take an in-person class if it's possible uh, online classes are great but we all know that Sometimes there's just nothing like being in a room with somebody, especially when you're trying to learn a, a fine art form. Um, anyway, that's, that's it for Mason Stains. So I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, get something out of it. And I'll see you later. Bye.